Hi, this is Ken from CAD Image. In this session, we're going to be taking a look at an introduction to CAD Image cabinets. We have a range of tools for ARCHICAD, and as I said in this session, today we're going to be looking at cabinets. The other tools, as you can see, we have those on Windows, we have coverings, we have stairs, electrical, objective, and keynotes. The names kind of give away what the tool does. So cabinets, as you can probably guess, does joinery work in cabinets. What I'm going to do is just run through some examples to show you what the cabinets tool is capable of. So here I have a few examples, but here we have a kitchen layout, and you can see there's lots of cabinets. You can see there's lots of variations, so different types of doors, we can have different types of handles, we have different types of cabinets themselves, so here we have a corner unit, here we have drawers, here we have double units, single units, and full height units as well. In this example, we just have a different configuration, this time with a little corner unit to close off the end, and again, more variations on the types and sizes of units that are available here. This third option starts to introduce again a different set, so we have handleless doors and drawers, and also introducing different colours and different types of construction. We'll start to take a look at some of the settings. So I've selected this unit, and the first thing to point out really is this cabinet is a cabinet in its own right. So tools wise, you'll see my toolbox here. I've arranged it with icons here, but what you'll notice is we have our own cabinets icon. That's really quite useful. If I wanted to select all the cabinets, for example, I can simply do, I'm on a Mac, Command A, Control A on a PC. But what that does is select all the cabinets. So it's not object based, it's cabinet based, which is it's quite useful. But what I'll do is I'll pick this one up and we'll take a look at the settings. So obviously this side is familiar to most ARCHICAD users. This is where we choose the folder we're looking at and then we choose the cabinet. You'll see here we have only four cabinet types. And in fact, all of the cabinets that you see in this view behind the screen here are just simply the CAD image cabinet configured in different ways. We have a number of options. If we go into the settings, we can determine the shape. So this is where we can choose, is it a front, which actually switches to this here? Is it rectangular? Is it an interior corner or an exterior corner? We then have options on how we determine the size of the unit. So are we working with a module width or are we working with a particular number of modules? In terms of set out, we can then configure various different parts. So if we go to section two, we can choose, is that a door, as it is just now. We can have drawers, we can switch it off entirely. We can have fixed panels, top hung, bottom hung, and there's a few others actually off the bottom of the recording here. Um, but we have double doors, folding doors, sliding doors, and roller doors as well. If we look at the drawers, again, these can all be configured. You'll see we've got options here to control the joinery. So what are the walls, where are they actually placed? What is our construction type? Do they merge left and right or is it freestanding? And then we can control the sizes. Similarly, we'll get controls for the rear wall. And if we want to put any partitions in here as well. We can also control the shelves. So the size, the spacing, and also the quantity of them. The numbers either with a size or we can undo this here and we can actually physically set the position. So maybe that would be 250 and 500 because I'll be honest, I don't think a joiner that's setting this out is going to work to 493 millimeters unless it's ultra, ultra precise and necessary. There's also control over the base and the plinth. If we switch this to a 3D view so we can see the preview, then we can control the depth. We can also choose uh, if this plinth is visible or not. So you'll see the preview change. And we can also set the depth of the toe space. We can even set it, let's go for both ends and front. And you'll see now this cabinet has a 70 mil toe space all the way around. So I'm gonna leave that in the front edge only. In terms of the doors and drawers, we can come in here and we can start to look at different types. I'll come on and show you some examples later. 
Same for the drawer panels. And then there's controls also for these roller doors. Handles again have lots of different control. There's a few of these off the bottom of the recording, unfortunately, but uh, again, I've got some examples to come and show you them in a little while. We can set the position of the handles on the drawers, top, center, or switched off, and we can also control the position on the doors, angles, depths, offsets, etc. Counter can also be configured, so the actual bench top itself, we could say, let's take this off 50 mil either side. And what you'll see is this now extends. We can step off the back. So if we wanted to hide cabling or pipe work or whatever it is behind the units, we can create that offset. And we can also put a bigger nosing on the front if necessary. We can set the depth. And we can choose options here, whether this is freestanding or if it merges at the ends. You can also put a rail underneath, which would show up in section. The nosing can be controlled. So right now I've got a half round. Let's set it for chamfered. You'll see the extra lines appear in the preview. Or we could just make it rectangular. If I really wanted to, we could get into the surfaces. And we could say make the nosing yellow. So you're not going to miss that. The upstand we will make royal blue. It's not present yet, those of you that are paying attention. If we go back in here, we can then go to the upstands and we could say, let's make it radius to height of 150 mil. You'll see off it goes and adds that on the back here. This, similar to all the other bits and pieces that I've already configured, we can actually come in and we can set edge offsets. So we could say on the left hand side, Pull it back 100 mil. We could stop short there, and we'll just configure all of these to 100. So we're going to end up with a strange looking cabinet, but you can see there's tons of control in there you can play with. There's also a bunch of display options. We can set the resolution for the quality and the projection types. We can set if the shelf outlines are visible on the surfaces of the cabinets. So let's just simply switch it on and off. And we can control how this is labeled in the plan view. So what I'm actually going to do is cancel that because I've just made a hideous unit and really I don't want to change what's in here. But a quick little thing I will do maybe is just select all these cabinets, go into the settings, we'll quickly change the handles to, let's go for this full length. And what you should see is now we have handles appear all over the place. So there's a little bit more work I've got to do because obviously the offset for this one here is not quite right. But you can see some of the changes that take in to account there. So let's just undo that, go back in, and maybe what we'll do is change how the doors are actually mounted. So right now they're flush mounted onto the carcass, we can actually surface mount them, and what you'll see happen there is the white spaces that were visible, those will vanish. If I just clear that out because we're now working with doors that are full size mounted onto the surface of the cabinet carcass. So that's a quick example there. If we take a look at some other examples of the other unit types, what I've done is create this pretty horrendous looking shape, but actually it's just to show the different types of doors and units we can have through the cabinet tool. If we take a quick look at the default settings, I briefly looked at this earlier, but I already mentioned we have the standard cabinet where we can build the carcass. We actually have this one here, which is quite useful in this case, where all I've done is I've mocked up a shape that I want to put some cabinet doors on. And what we can use is this here to put on either drawers, false fronts, we've got doors with different panel types. We can choose the shape. And then we can go on and we can set things like, is this a beveled panel? Is it louvers? change them to 90 degrees, we can control the dimensions, the sizes, we can take a look at the handles, let's make it a D-ring, we can set the position on the door to be maybe 250 from the top, 100mm in at 
60 degrees, whatever I want to do with it, we can play around with it and change this to be whatever's necessary. There's also display options we can control in there as well. A couple of other units, we have this end cabinet and we can set this to different types. It may just be a wall that we just want to create a blank panel on the end of a carcass. Maybe it's a rectangular panel just to close off a shape. We can have a bill nose and we can also have the bill nose with the shelves and we have full control over those as well. We can set the numbers, the spacings, the base and the plinth so we can set it to be the same as whatever else we have in there. Again we have the same controls for the counter and similar controls for the display options. The final object is the CAD image pelmet and that's actually it's not visible in this one here but you'll see in the next example that we can put a pelmet, in fact, let's go back here. The pelmet's the white edge around the top and around the base here just to close off the underside of the cabinets. So going back to the island, this is just an example showing all the, the different types of drawers that we can use, the doors, convex, concave, everything else. You'll see I've got a cooker unit and I also have a sink. These have just been solid element operations into the top of the cabinets to create the end result that we need. So there's a couple of blank panels in the end here. So those are some examples. If we take a look at this one here, this is a, a bathroom configuration this time. And I've used different surfaces. I haven't mentioned the surfaces, but obviously for the, the various different components, we can set different surfaces on the counters, the nosings, the upstands, the doors, whether it's the, the panel itself, the edging, the handles, the plinths, whatever, that can all be configured. And I've also configured this one, this is actually one physical unit, but it has six repeating modules. So all we do is configure one, set the overall size, and off it goes and spaces the rest in. You can see there's handles here that control those. So I've already briefly mentioned door styles. Here I have a plan view of door styles, and they all look pretty similar. If we go to elevation though, you'll start to see some of the changes in them. So this gives you a taster of some of the different types and the configuration that's possible here. So we have plain cabinets, uh, sorry, plain doors, we have them beveled edges, we have full size, we have louvers, we can set them vertical, horizontal, we can angle them, you can have panels that are inset, you can change the type of joinery. Uh, there's just loads and loads of configuration in here. So lots of different things we can do. There's also these ones at the bottom. These are the glazed units and what we can do there is put in different infill panels. So here we have grids, we have lattice work and we have prairie style as it's called at the end here as well. So loads of configuration. I've set all the materials, the surfaces to be pretty much the same. That's just to make it a bit easier to read here but obviously those can all be configured to your individual requirements. It's important to show as well if I go to section and just zoom in roughly here, we can see a section through there, we can see the joinery, we can see the different type of construction that's there. If I was to come into the settings, we'll change the mounting type, we'll put it into face frame. If we go to the counter, bench top, and we put a rail underneath, you'll see when this rebuilds, we can see the difference. We have the new elements now applied here. I've got a uniform cut through here, but obviously we can set different films and things as required. If I switch to 3D view, you can see a little bit more of these different types that are visible here. Again, I've gone for uniform materials throughout just to keep consistency for these particular views. We also have different handle styles. So here's an elevation view just to show you some of the different ones. In fact, it's probably better to go to 3D. That way if I spin around slightly, you can see we have the bars, we have the knobs, we have the L shapes, we have this style, we have no handles. There's loads of control over that that you can use to configure it to whatever's required. But what I thought I would do is these are just very much individual examples to show how things come together. But what I've got here is actually a set of images and PDFs that have come from a customer. So if I switch across to this first one, all of these examples come from JAT Design Associates and they're based in Texas in the USA. They've been a cabinets user for quite some time and do some amazing detailed work with cabinets and a few of our other 
products and tools as well. So rather than go for just the glossy images to begin with, I've started off with this PDF and it just shows with some black and white images to show what the end product looks like. But you can see all this construction information is actually taken from the cabinets that have been created in the first place. So if we drop down here, there's an elevation view and you can see the various dimensions and different sizes. It's also quite important to point out that because I'm based in the UK, I work in the metric system. So I work in millimetres, that's just the way my brain tends to think. But our tools work with the various different localised versions of ARCHICAD. So in the USA, where they work in the imperial system, then the measurements can switch to feet, inches, decimals, fractions, whatever it is that ARCHICAD needs, it will switch and allow you to work that way. I have another example here. This is a, an island detail and obviously I think you'll agree the inspiration for this has come from my incredibly weird island that I'd already placed. But again, it's a combination of 3D views that have been taken from the 3D model and then we have the various different bits of construction information that's taken from there. So if we zoom in, you can see some of the level of detail. We then have some more 3D images, the same island now, set in context with all the, the surrounding building to give it contextual information. And there's another example from a slightly different angle. Kitchens are the first thing we think of when we think of cabinets, but in fact, obviously we can use them for bathrooms. And again, another couple of examples showing the different types of construction and joinery that have been used to create these examples. We'll just finish off with a couple of these rendered examples to show the types of work that's possible to do. And as I say, rather than me just do a sort of static demo or whatever it is, these are actually live projects and hopefully can give you a better overview of what's possible with the tools. So I'd just like to finish by saying thanks for attending. If you have any questions or comments, need more information, feel free to get in touch through the main website, which is caramage.com. And if you want to take a look at the objects and downloads that we have for Archicad, you can take a look at mycaramage.com.